This animation demonstrates the surgical technique of mini laparotomy under local anesthesia for tubal ligation. It consists of nine chapters showing the steps of the procedure, preparation, use of the uterine elevator, administering local anesthesia, creating the mini laparotomy, locating fallopian tubes, grasping fallopian tubes, tubal occlusion, closure of mini laparotomy, and postoperative care and instructions. Before starting the procedure, make sure the client has washed her abdomen and genitals, her bladder is voided, and her consent forms are signed. Make sure the sterile instrument tray and the sterile field are prepared. Make sure the client is alert and knows what is happening. Continue conversing with her each step along the way. Place the client in a supine, frog-like position to perform a gentle bimanual exam. This will determine her uterus size, position, shape, mobility, and any pelvic abnormality. Insert a speculum and iodine swab the vagina and cervix twice. Insert the uterine elevator in a normal position if the uterus position is antiverted. If the uterus is retroverted, which is less common, insert the elevator facing downwards. Gently push down on the uterine elevator to determine the fundal height. Remove the speculum, leaving the uterine elevator in place. Palpate for fundal height in order to determine the incision site. Select a midline incision site 1 cm below the fundus or 3 cm above the pubic symphysis. Discard the gloves and place the client's legs straight. Prep the incision site by swabbing the abdomen twice with iodine antiseptic. Lay down sterile drapes and create a sterile field. Inject local anesthetic at a parallel angle just under the skin and raise a small wheel. Aspirate first to avoid vessels, then advance the needle to inject layer by layer in diamond shape. Repeat this diamond shape with the needle at a 45 degree angle. Finish with a vertical injection. Massage the skin and check the client's skin sensitivity with forceps. Make a transverse skin incision with the scalpel, approximately 3 to 5 centimeters, and bluntly dissect the subcutaneous tissue. Incise the fascia transversely. Bluntly create a hole in the midline and separate the rectus muscles with retractors. 
Confirm the peritoneum layer by checking transparency. Push away any bowel and then create a hole in the peritoneum. Extend the hole in the peritoneum and reposition the retractors. Gently push down on the uterine elevator to bring the fundus into view through the incision site. Take care to use gentle movement with the elevator to avoid perforation of the uterus. If the uterus cannot be manipulated, the elevator may have to be reinserted. Gently rotate the uterine elevator along its axis in order to bring the right or the left cornu of the uterus and fallopian tube under the incision site. The fimbria might not be visible due to adhesions. Look for surrounding anatomy for spatial orientation to confirm the fallopian tube. If the patient is experiencing discomfort, consider dripping lidocaine onto the fallopian tubes and broad ligament. Gently use a tubal hook to bring the fallopian tube into view. Starting at the fundus, slide the hook down the posterior of the uterus as a guide. Then turn the tubal hook to scoop up around the lateral side. Grasp the fallopian tube with Babcock forceps and bring it through the incision. Drip lidocaine onto the tube and uterus. Identify the fimbriated end by walking the tube distally. Raise a 2 cm loop of the fallopian tube at the mid portion and tie with absorbable suture. Cut the fallopian tube loop with scissors while still holding the ligature. Ensure hemostasis and cut the ligature leaving 1 cm. Return the stump to the abdominal cavity. Gently rotate the uterine elevator to the other side and repeat this on the other fallopian tube. Ensure hemostasis before closing the fascia. Suture the fascia properly with running or interrupted sutures to prevent herniation. Close the skin with absorbable sutures and dress the wound. Remove the uterine elevator and check for vaginal bleeding. Dispose of biohazardous materials and decontaminate instruments and gloves. Help the client off the table and move her to the recovery area. Observe the client for protocols and monitor her vitals for one to two hours before sending her home. Fill out the patient record form, give written and oral instructions to the client, and make a follow-up appointment.